Beautiful summer night here in Carson as we are just about ready for the Chargers and the Seahawks. And we go downstairs for the first time, check in with Haley Elwood. Haley, Haley. All right, thank you, Spiro. Now we know Phillip Rivers will get the start at quarterback tonight, but the bigger question is who steps in for him once his night is done? I spoke with Chargers head coach Anthony Lynn before the game who told me that guy tonight is Geno Smith. It's the reverse of last week with Smith getting the nod over Cardell Jones because Lynn said they just want to see what the quarterback can do after going 14 of 23 for 218 yards a touchdown and a pick last week versus Arizona. That means Cardale Jones will obviously be up third tonight and Lynn also said to expect rookie quarterback Nick Shimanek to get some snaps in the fourth. Guys. All right Haley certainly one of the big position battles all throughout this camp and the preseason there is Anthony Lynn gearing up for year two as the head coach of the Chargers but LT has got some big decisions to make over the next couple of weeks. Yeah and this is the perfect time for these guys to display their talent. You know, Anthony Lynn and this coaching staff is watching very closely. There are some tight braces all over the, this football field, this football team, and um, it starts tonight. First well, I up, say it continues tonight. That's right. Started last week. Big night for so many of these young players, and among them is this kid right here, Roberto Guayo. We know about his story. Of course, flamed out after he was drafted by the Tampa Bay Bucks. 59th overall in 2016 trying to resurrect his young career as he battles Caleb Sturgis for the starting place kicking duties for this team. Here comes Russell Wilson. Seventh season of the NFL the former Wisconsin star a Super Bowl champion four time pro bowler and obviously a Seattle team that fell a little bit down the ranks in the NFC last season but people forget LT he was in the conversation for the MVP through the first three months of the season he was incredible yes he was incredible and the guy that did it all for this football team even led the team in rushing uh, but make no mistake about it this team the Seattle Seahawks will go as far as Russell Wilson can take them for the play action from Wilson to get the party started that pass is caught over the middle it's Jerron Brown and then a couple of late markers come in at the end of the play it's a pickup of 28 yards as they go right at that Chargers secondary. Jalen Watkins among the defenders on the coverage. Personal foul. Defense number 27 lowering of the head to initiate contact. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. So it was Jalen Watkins the man penalized you see him leading with the helmet so it doesn't take very long for that penalty to come into play in this game yeah and you see it right here anytime a player defender uh, offensive player lowers their head and make helmet to helmet contact with the crown of the helmet that would be called Watkins a member of that Philadelphia Super Bowl team last season signed a, a one-year free agent contract in March this is Chris Carson who made a name for himself last season within this Seattle offense going at this Gus Bradley coached Chargers defense still no Joey Bosa of course tweaked his foot and ankle a couple of days ago at practice they're going to rest him for precautionary reasons no Corey Legion tonight he of course will begin the season on that suspended list will miss the first four games so they want to get a good look at both Isaac Rochelle and Darius Feinlein over these next couple of weeks to get them ready the pitch play to Carson again trying to find the edge and Carson is going to waltz into the end zone. 23 yards and now a late penalty marker is thrown far side of the field and we'll see if this one is coming back. Legal block in the back. Offense number 88. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. So the 23 yard run is indeed negated. Will Disley undraft, or I should say the fourth round pick out of Washington, was the man penalized number 88. Just a simple sweep here and some, some missed tackles right there. Melvin Ingram missed the tackle, and there's the hold right there. It looked like. Will Disley with the hole. LT, I gotta say, didn't look like much. 
At least at that first vantage point, Tony Carrente, our referee, making the call. Walk to 13 13:51. Looked like Jalen Jalen Watkins was the guy that he was holding, and that's probably the reason why mm. Chris Carson had a clean uh, lane to the end zone there. As you can see, Jalen Watkins coming up and tries to get off this block here, and yes, Disley with the hold just doesn't allow Jalen to come off that block. So they take the six points off the board. And now Wilson from the gun. Quick strike near the side of the field. It is complete. That is Jamari a Stringfellow on the reception. Stringfellow, second year kid out of Mississippi, undrafted, trying to earn one of those back end wide receiver spots for Pete Carroll in Seattle. It's a pickup of five. There is Gus Bradley, of course, no stranger to Seattle. What a run he had as their defensive coordinator up in the Pacific Northwest. Legion of Boom, the whole deal. Yeah, he knows this team very well. Got a chance to talk to him this week about this bunch. And a cutback maneuver. This is Mike Davis trying to move the pile. We'll pick up four yards. And Bradley trying to build something at least similar tough to gain those heights with what they did with those defenses up in Seattle LT but this defense has everything you want at least on paper they can rush the quarterback they can cover on the back end incredible potential well talking to Gus Bradley this week he, he talked about the Seattle Seahawks coming out running the football and that tackling will be the point of emphasis so far Seattle has done just that they have come out running the football the charges have to be open to tackling Wilson on second down. This is where he's so dangerous, trying to buy himself some extra time. He's going to run it. And will slide just short of that first down marker, which is at the 10. It's a pickup of three yards. As LT mentioned earlier, as if he didn't do enough last year, who was also their leading rusher, accounted for three of only four total rushing touchdowns, LT, that they had all season. I tell you, that's, this is where he's so dangerous that you just saw. Um, he get out the pocket and he can run it or he can throw it. And usually, you know, he always makes the right decision when he's out there in the open field. So Pete Carroll back in Southern California. Ninth season for Carroll. Hard to believe how quickly time is falling up in Seattle. Wilson somehow escapes the grasp of Melvin Ingram. The two incredible athletes meeting there as Wilson is able to wiggle free, picks up a couple of yards. But they are still short. It'll be fourth down. See Melvin at the top of your screen right here has a direct path to Russell Wilson as he beats the left tackle there. Wasn't able to bring him down, but he calls Russell to run out of the pocket and to help Kane to finally finish him. So Pete Carroll will keep his offense onto the field. They will go for it here on fourth and four. And now it looks like a timeout taken by Pete Carroll as they want to talk it over. Early stages, opening quarter here at StubHub Center, and we are scoreless. Are we looking forward to that? Backstage Chargers, a first of its kind all access show that will follow the Los Angeles Chargers in real time this season. The story begins September the 6th on Spectrum Sportsnet, 9 p.m., and then September the 7th at 5. Facebook watch we will be watching intently as the 33 yard field goal by Jason Myers is good so Seattle changes its mind they elect to kick and salvage the three points to get on the board first I heard Anthony Lynn talking to the troops in that little teaser one year into his reign as Chargers head coach, a little bit more comfortable, more settled with uh, all the movement and instability last year, LT changing venues, changing facilities. We had a chance to talk to Philip Rivers about that, and he said everyone's more comfortable. You know, even something as simple as the commute from your home, getting to the new facility, learning everything, because as you know better than everyone, Football player is a creature of habit. Yeah, you know, it I takes was, some time to get settled. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, we, we like things to be the same way each and every every day, you know, and that's just how we we work our routine. That's how we like to have things. We want to know exactly what we're up against. And so, uh, second year being in Los Angeles, I tell you, this group has a great idea of what to expect the second year around with Anthony Glenn. Jason Myers boots it away. 
This is J.J. Jones who has been among the kick returners. Jones showing some electricity. 28 yards on the burst as he crosses the 30. And we will get our first preseason look at the future Hall of Famer, Phillip Rivers, seven-time Pro Bowler. Second most passing yards in the NFL last season. As I mentioned at the top, only Tom Brady had more. And really the only thing left for Rivers to chase is that postseason success. And he says that's the only thing that drives him right now. And for Phillip, it begins tonight. He want to come out and be clean, get in and out of the huddle, you know, and lead this offense down on a play, uh, scoring drive. Melvin Gordon splits out. On first and ten, Rivers pulls it back. Pump takes a second time. And then throws a near side of the field. He's got Tyrell Williams. What a play by Rivers. And you can see the little smirk on his face as they pick up 21 yards at a Chargers first down. Well, when you look at this play, Phillip Rivers wanted to go here first, as you see it. And then he resets himself, comes back, and finds Tyrell Williams as he spins out of that route and catches the ball at his highest point. Great job by Tyrell Williams right there. Uh, great throw also by Phillip Rivers. But we have seen that time and time again from 17. Yes, we have. Over 4,000 yards passing last season for the ninth time in his career. As Melvin Gordon takes on tacklers, picks up five. And LT, everyone's excited at this time of the year. Everyone's got the hope in the preseason that this could be something special. But you know, as Philip told us this week at practice, you look at the, what they have on paper, this has the potential to be something very, very special. It really does. You know, there's talent all over this, this football team, but it all starts and ends with Philip Rivers. And he knows he has the talent here, and he raises the level of everybody else's play. Rivers, that little sideline slam on second and six. Finds Gordon out of the backfield for a pickup of two. It'll set up. A third down coming up. Bradley McDougal on the tackle for Seattle. How about the starters for Ken Wisenhunt, offensive coordinator, getting ready for his second season here in Los Angeles. And the big addition up front, as we touched on last week, Mike Pouncey. First time we're seeing him and Phillip Rivers. And everyone you talk to, Wisenhunt, Rivers, Anthony Lynn, tells you that you can already see the difference with what he brings to the table. Pro Bowl caliber center as Rivers again over the middle back in the sidearm delivery this time to Keenan Allen as they will move the chains and pick up of six and keep in mind they had a, a good center last year in Spencer Coley better than they expected but Pouncey is a, a different animal. Yeah Pouncey is a very experienced guy a guy that has seen all the defenses um, and really can make all the calls and get these guys in the right protection but also uh, uh, with the run game he can help him out tremendously in the run game. With the late handoff here to Gordon. And it was interesting, and you can speak to this LT obviously, but you know, Melvin said in the running game, as you just touched on, Pouncey makes such a difference with the calls he's making and just kind of spearheading that unit. Well, sure, and you know, Mike Pouncey is an athletic guy that can get out and pull some. He can reach three 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 techs, defensive tackles. Um, he, he does it with ease, but also just knowing where he can help out in the run game. That's where he's most vital to this football team. Rivers again delayed handoff. This is Gordon. He's got a seam inside the 25. And look at Gordon at physicality taking on tacklers as he picks up 14 yards and another L.A. Chargers first down. And we, we look at this play. I want you to look at Mike Pouncey right here. We just got through talking about him. Seals off his man so that Melvin Gordon can get through that hole. Great block from him. And Melvin Gordon finishing that run, breaking some tackles, and, and finishing strong there as he spins off one tackler and still tries to gain more yards. Great run by Melvin Gordon. So good opening drive for the Chargers inside Seattle's 25 yard line. Rivers on first and 10 is going to swing it again. Finds Allen. And this offense is humming. Allen moves the sticks. Great protection there from the stride. offensive line. Great protection. As we watch the route from Keenan Allen, 
As he's inside right here, just runs, you know, a dig route from inside. And, and really, Phillip does a great job of hanging in the pocket, waiting for Keenan Allen to come all the way across the field into an open lane. What a season for Keenan Allen last year. Consensus NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Career highs with 102 catches, nearly 1,400 yards receiving. Authoring one of the great statistical seasons in Chargers history as D. Trez Newsom, the rookie undrafted kid out of Western Carolina. And this kid is tough. He just looks for contact, LT, as he picks up eight. Yes, he, he he's a tough kid, a spark plug for this football team. And, you know, we saw last week had a, a good uh, showing in Arizona, had some really nice plays, and we know that this coaching staff really likes Detrez Newsom. And he's in a fight right now for that number three running back position behind Gordon and Austin Eckler. Eckler is out tonight. Precaution with a minor leg injury. This is Gordon, and he's going to punch it in for six. And the Chargers march right down the field and take the lead. Yeah, this is... This is credit to the offensive line as they just got great push as you watch. Now just take a look at these guys. Watch the push that they get up front. And Melvin Gordon really has a, a great hold to run to run through right up the middle of the Seattle Seahawks defense. I tell you guys, this is the way you draw it up. Roberto Aguayo on for the point after. Good hold, good snap. And Aguayo is good. Nine plays, 70 yards in five minutes and 13 seconds. Efficiency from that Chargers starting offense. Seven to three Chargers in L.A. The Chargers new home L.A. Stadium at Hollywood Park is taking shape for all of the action that begins in 2020. The fan experience will be unforgettable and the entire project with an indoor outdoor design and 70,000 square feet dual size video board is totally groundbreaking and very L.A. To reserve your spot and sign up for special member benefits, visit FightForLA.com today. Beautiful sunset here in Los Angeles. Melvin Gordon and that starting offense with a, a clean, efficient drive. Nine plays, 70 yards as Gordon bangs it in from two yards out. Aguayo's kick will be fielded by J.D. McKissick. Good season last year and a good start before injuries to set his campaign. An 18-yard return here. Good coverage down the field as we will get our second look at Gus Bradley and his Chargers defense, which uh, last year LT was third best in the league in terms of scoring defense points allowed, just under 18 per game. And you know, we mentioned Corey Legion's going to start the season on the suspended list, will miss the first four games. So Isaac Rochelle and some of these other young players, yeah. Damian Square, are going to get some good run tonight. Yeah, and Gus really likes his, his depth at that position. Well, Damian Square did a heck of a job last week and catching the coach's eye. Let's see if he continues to do that. Wilson with that looping pass up the far side of the field. It's incomplete. And centered receiver was Brandon Marshall trying to catch on with Seattle. Michael Davis was the man on the coverage. And this kid Davis has been the talk at camp. Made the team last year as an undrafted rookie. Pass interference, defense number 43. Automatic first down. Let's take a look at Michael Davis here. He's a big long corner. He wants to get into Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall is a big guy. Let's just watch what happens here. It's good, good press right there. Now you got to let him go. You can't, you, you got to let him go and run with him and turn around and find the ball. That's where the penalty came from. She so just didn't let him go. Turns out to be a 17-yard penalty on Michael Davis. Good test for the young man tonight against Brandon Marshall, a six-time Pro Bowler. Wilson on first down has his man, and he's got him. Up the far side of the field, it's Jerron Brown inside the Chargers' 25-yard line. There's a penalty marker thrown back at the Chargers' 45. If the play stands, it's good for 46. Tony Correnti is our referee and already has been a busy man. Yeah. 
Pass interference, defense number 37. This penalty has been declined. The result of the play is a first down. That's Jaleel Adai on the penalty. Well, we just look at Jaleel here in coverage. That doesn't look much, much to me like a penalty on Jaleel. I don't know what they saw there, but the offensive guy is pushing off on Jaleel. Carroll obviously declines the penalty, so the 46-yard pass play sets him up with a short field here. This is Carson taking on Chargers tacklers. He'll pick up another Seattle first down, a pickup of a dozen. And right now, Gus Bradley's first string defense playing on its heels. Well, we talked to Gus earlier this week, and he talked about Seattle because of the type of defense that they play, the Chargers. They were going to get challenged deep. Last year, Seattle took about six or seven shots deep on, on the Los Angeles Chargers. We already seen it now. Twice on this drive, they've taken deep shots. This is New Mercy. Again, this is a, a Seattle team last year that finished nine and seven. They missed the playoffs for the first time in these six years that uh, Russell Wilson has been their starting quarterback. And obviously, you know, with everyone else aside from the Rams in that division, just trying to play catch up. But they've had a tough off season, and a lot of people feel like this could be another step back for this franchise. Well, I'll tell you, the identity for, on this team is definitely changing for the Seattle Seahawks. It was known by that defense and the Legion of Boom and Marshawn Lynch in his running game. Now it's becoming Russell Wilson's team, so the identity is changing somewhat. Of course, the holdout of Earl Thomas still looming over this franchise as that thing continues to play out. Wilson's pass is incomplete. Intended for Keenan Reynolds, former star quarterback at Navy. Trying to reinvent himself as an NFL wide receiver. Good coverage on the play by Casey Hayward, the All-Pro. On the back end of the defense, it'll be third and goal. Casey, an experienced veteran, studies a lot of film, so I'm sure that's one route that he was ready for. Certainly looked like it on that play. 11 interceptions over the last two years for Hayward. Top of the NFL during that stretch with Marcus Peters. Third and goal. Here they come. Wilson again escapes Ingram. Slinging it to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Excellent recovery by Jaleel Adai. Nick Vanette, the tight end, was the intended receiver, and what a break by Adai. Great job by Jaleel here as you see him chasing the defender and gets his hand in there perfectly to knock it out at the right time. That's textbook coverage by Jaleel Adai. What a career and how far this kid has come. Sixth year in the NFL. One of the most underrated players at his position in the league. Undrafted out of Central Michigan and now a key piece in Gus Bradley's defense. 25 yard field goal by Sebastian Janikowski makes it a one point game. No moment of silence earlier tonight to honor the passing of the matriarch of the Chargers organization, Faye Spanos, who of course passed away a couple of days ago at the age of 92. A, an emotional week culminating in the funeral services up in Stockton, close to the family home. You can see the decal that the Chargers players were wearing all season long. The emotional bedrock, not only of the family, but of this franchise. And we certainly wish the Spanos family all the best as the Chargers will have their second crack. J.J. Jones with a nifty little 19-yard return. LT, you shared some of your remembrances of Faye. No matter who you ask on this franchise, everyone had a story about her warmth and her generosity and, and the love that just exuded that woman. Yeah, just a sweet and loving woman. But the thing that I remember most is her, her sweet, infectious smile. You know, whenever you, you saw her, that's the one thing that stood out. She made you feel welcome with her smile. And you just wanted to give her a hug every single time you saw her. Mm. And her favorite color was actually that bubblegum pink, which is <laughs> the color of the helmet decal. And uh, they will be honoring her memory all season long. Rocket Field StubHub Center. Uh, just a brilliant Southern California summer night. Temperatures right around 80 degrees. Kickoff for the Chargers and the Seattle Seahawks. Anthony Lynn giving Phillip Rivers another offensive drive after a very impressive start. First and 10 throws across his body as only he can. It's Melvin Gordon. 
and that'll be good for a Chargers first down. And boy, what a start for Rivers in this offensive pickup of 16. Yeah, and this is what the Chargers want to see from from Melvin Gordon. You can see him coming out the backfield here as he continues to involve his game. He's just going to come up and run a slant route right inside there and beat beat the defender across his face. And Phillip Rivers buys time to find him late in the play. Rivers five of his first five. 58 yards as they continue to march down the field first down run here this is Gordon spinning outside the 30 and one thing Anthony Lynn said you know, his only regret in terms of the play calling last year was not getting Melvin Gordon even more involved in the passing game something to keep an eye on LT this season well they've already gotten off to a good start and keeping Melvin Gordon involved in the passing game so that's a good sign for the Los Angeles Chargers this was the number four total offense in the NFL last season. Number one passing offense. Started with the protection. Phillip Rivers sacked a league low 18 times, fewest in his career. You keep Rivers upright, you got a chance to do something. As they keep it on the ground here to Melvin Gordon. And the hope is that that line protection will continue with the arrival of Mike Pouncey, of course, Russell Okum, who really solidified the offensive line. Last season, and a couple of those young players, Dan Feeney, the third round pick who was very good last year as a rookie, and Forrest Lamp, LT, who's about a week away from coming back from that second knee surgery. Now, this is a unit that's coming together. You, you can see the potential that they have up front. They pass block very well, but you can see the run game started to, to take form. Rivers on first and ten, quick strike over the middle, caught and brought down right around the 40-yard line. A pickup of five on the play. That's what Virgil Green provides for this team. Just a big target sits right over the ball right there, and and it is an easy outlet for Philip Rivers to throw to. So Virgil Green with his first reception. First season for Green after coming over in free agency from Denver. Kind of a tough position that he's in first year with the team still getting acclimated, but suddenly he's the veteran leader in that group. And has to get adjusted in a hurry. Looks like Rivers here will take a timeout. And as we move under a minute left to play, this will be the first Chargers timeout of the night. One point Chargers lead as we play late stages of this opening quarter. Rocket Field StubHub Center here in Carson, California, about a 30, 35 minute drive, depending on the traffic. Maybe a little bit more here from downtown Los Angeles. And the LA Chargers regular season kicks off September the 9th, right around the corner against Andy Reid in Kansas City, right here at StubHub Center. Come share an amazing game day experience. For tickets, visit fightforla.com. This is a game day experience unlike any other in the NFL, of course. A big stadium being built not far from here in Inglewood, ready for play in 2020. But in the meantime, this is intimate. It's different. Mm -hmm. and it was a fun place to be last season. Looking forward to this 2018 season for the Chargers. Little end around play. Travis Benjamin. All that speed that he brings, able to find the edge, could be the fastest guy in the sport. A pickup of four, good pursuit by that Seattle defense. Such a dynamic weapon, weapon for the Los Angeles Chargers. They get him the ball in several different ways. This is just one of the ways that they get him the ball on the reverse. But you was, you will see him from time to time going deep for Phillip Rivers. And Ken Wisenhunt last year very creatively kind of worked him into the running game, something that they want to continue to build on this year. Third season for Benjamin since coming over from Cleveland. Back in 2016, there's Wizard Hunt, the offensive coordinator. On the sideline, looks like some movement on the offensive side of the field. And now some pushing here. Officials are quickly trying to separate the players. Mike Pouncey right in the center of it. As we expect them to do. <laughs> With 18 seconds left in the quarter. False start. Offense number 88. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. It's Virgil Green who had the catch a couple of minutes ago. It's one of the point of emphasis for tonight 
for Anthony Lynn is, is just the penalties. Last week they had 15 penalties for 155 yards. That's something they definitely want to, want to clean up tonight. Yeah, that game last week took about four hours. <laughs> so many penalties. As, uh, players trying to work out the kicks. We'll see if they get one last play. They will here before the end of the quarter. Rivers going near side of the field and it is incomplete trying to locate Keenan Allen. And a nice matchup. Shaquille Griffin. Along that sideline. Griffin was there for Seattle. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. An excellent start for Rivers and his starting offense as they will take a one point lead into the second as we continue in Los Angeles. Stay with us. Pot of cheer on your L.A. Chargers in London when they take on the Tennessee Titans at iconic Wembley Stadium on October the 21st. Help the team plan your trip abroad. Visit Chargers.com and book your fan travel package today. Pretty good grilling going on out in the parking lot here. Fans in regular season form. I always love to walk through the parking mm. lot and smell the grill. Oh. I'm hungry. I have to send someone out and bring some of that. Stake inside here as this is Drew Kayser on uh, the punt and then the return by J.D. McKissick able to cross the 30 yard line a 49 yard punt and a return of 12 first quarter stats a very impressive opening drive by Philip Rivers they marched him down the field about nine plays 70 yards went to that last drive stalling as they have a one point lead here LT as we begin the second they're very balanced on offense you see 43 rushing yards 62 passing yards that's the balance that Anthony Lynn and Ken Wisenhunt want wants for this offense. This is a Seattle team as we mentioned earlier missed the playoffs last year first time in a half dozen years since Russell Wilson took over they were four and two in the division finished second place in the NFC West behind the LA Rams. Pitch play here to Carson. Very close to the 25 yard line. It's a loss of a yard. Denzel Perryman on the tackle. Perryman, of course, missed the first eight games last year, suffered that ankle injury in the preseason, and that LT was a huge loss in the running game. One of the reasons why, statistically, they were not very good against the run. Yeah, he's one guy that sits in the middle of that defense that can do a little bit of everything. Very quick to the ball, sideline to sideline, but when he gets there, he's going to hit you. Again, in the middle of the play, Denzel Perriman. And one area where this defense wanted to get better was from a speed standpoint. Yep. One of the reasons why they used their first four picks and uh, defenders. Let's watch him right here, sitting in the middle of the defense. He's going to just sit there. He, he reads the running back coming right inside, and he's just going to wait on him and finish the tackle. And this is a big year for Perriman. Fourth year in the league, the former second round pick he has yet to play a full season in his first three years in this final year of his rookie contract. Trying to put it all together to get himself paid next season. Wilson from the gun on third and nine. Nowhere to throw. He's going to take a shot. Far side of the field, and it is caught. How did David Moore come down with that pass? 52 yards. It looked like a die was going to snatch it for the interception. Incredible concentration for Moore. This is just a great play by David Moore, as you see him going up the field on Michael on Michael Davis, and he has good coverage there. Jaleel Adai comes over, thinks he has the interception, and somehow David Moore comes down with that ball. And there he is again. It's Moore, and the officials say he is just short of the end zone. As David Moore suddenly putting it on this Chargers defense 19 more through the air from Let, Wilson. Let's watch more right here. He's lined up on Michael Davis good coverage but he just comes back inside for a ball. That's a great throw by Russell Wilson. Not much that the defender can do. On this last play I thought Jaleel Adai had the interception. Unbelievable catch by David Moore there. Carson trying to find some daylight. No signal from the officials yet appears to be short. Now the Chargers say they have the football. And Seattle will maintain possession. It'll be second down. David Moore, their seventh round pick out of East Central Oklahoma. Adrian Phillips came up with that ball.
Look at this play at the end as Chris Carson is fighting for yards. Adrian Phillips strips him right here and comes up with the football. I don't Fishers. believe I heard a, a, a whistle there, Spiro. Officials did say that the play was whistled dead at that point. So second and goal. Carson again. Step. Football is loose. He fumbled it. Who's got it? Pylon at the goal line. Fisher's trying to get to the bottom of the pile. And it is Chargers football. It will be ruled a touchback as Corey Legi and the Chargers defense able to hold. This is what you want to see from your defense. They're not in there until they're in there. They're not scoring a touchdown. That's the mindset as you see Melvin Ingram with the big hit causes a fumble. And the Chargers get the ball. As it looks like Philip Rivers night is over and we get our first look at Geno Smith. As this intense battle for the backup quarterback position behind Philip Rivers continues. First up, Geno Smith. As he takes over for Rivers. With the Chargers up 7 to 6. Hand off here to Gordon. And still very early. You know, two plus weeks left of the preseason, but you, know, you talk to Anthony Lynn, you talk to Ken Wisenhunt, it seems like Geno Smith, at least at the moment, has about a half step lead on Cardell Jones. Well, he has the experience. This is a guy that has 31 career starts. And so he's played a lot of football. He's seen a lot of defenses. And he just looks a little bit more poised at this point um, under center. Expected to see a heavy dose of Jones in the second half tonight. And right now, it is Smith under center. Second and nine from the 21. Smith able to escape. Dangerous with his legs will slide to the 30 yard line. Was a bit uneven last week in his first outing in the preseason in Arizona, but a good play here. Nowhere to throw the football, LT. Picks up eight. And this is an added dimension that Geno Smith brings you is the ability to evade the rush, get out the pocket, and, and possibly run for a first down. Because here he, he was just a couple yards short. College star at West Virginia, drafted second round by the Jets in 2013. Jets starter for about two full seasons before he was beset by injuries that fractured jaw, the ACL tear in 2016. As the Chargers run for the first down here with Melvin Gordon. Last year, Eli Manning's back up with the New York Giants and now trying to do the same behind Phillip Rivers. And, and this is a player that Anthony Lynn knows very well going back to his days with the New York Jets. So he's seen a lot of Geno. He knows exactly what what to expect from Geno. Um, and so Geno just again we talked about this a little bit last last week. Geno has to be able to take care of the ball in critical situations. Lenos is coach offensive assistant first two years for Smith in the NFL with the Jets. So certainly familiar with the those two Smith's pass getting a little bit away from him. Trying to find Keenan Allen down the field. Smith takes a hit. As he continues to try to get comfortable, Tom Johnson was the man applying the pressure. You can see Keenan inside as he's he's running a, a out route, went down inside and went back out, hoping to find the wide open lane there. Shaquille Griffin with the coverage. Gino over the middle completes. That's the tight end Virgil Green nicely thrown by Smith a pickup of 20 as he hits Green right up the seam for the first down. Yeah, and as you can see Virgil Green this is what you want from your tight end he's just going to go and run a stop route get right in Gino Smith's line of sight. Great throw from Gino he hits that back foot and lets it go. Great timing route and throw on that play. You know just how thin this Chargers team is at tight end. Really, their only perceived weakness at this point, of course, the devastating ACL injury of Hunter Henry 
on the first day of OTAs back in May, which will likely cost him the season. So you've got Virgil Green and really a lot of unproven guys behind him in that tight end room. Yeah, and, and we had a chance to talk to Ken Wisenhunt about that, and there's a couple of guys that he liked. Culkin last week actually had a pretty decent game. He's looking for consistency with Culkin, and um, if, if he can provide that tonight, then Culkin might have that, that first-hand track for the second mm -hmm. uh, string spot for the tight end for the Chargers. And of course, the reports a couple of weeks ago that uh, Tom Telesco and the Chargers front office continuing to have ongoing talks with LT's old running mate Antonio Gates. Another one play called here as the Chargers cross inside Seattle territory. Gordon getting a nice little run here in the first half before he will hit the showers early. Offense Again, has moved the ball very well so far tonight. LT, I'll give you another chance. Any any late breaking news you want to bring <laughs> for us here with Antonio? Nothing yet. No, not not yet. <laughs> There's Ken Wisenhunt. He certainly hopes that uh, Mr. Gates will walk through that tunnel at some point. But uh, they feel good about some of these young players. We talked to Philip Rivers about them. Sean Culkin, Braden Bowman, the kid who they brought on late last season, originally ended the league undrafted with the Jets. Expect to see heavy dose of him tonight. But a chance for some of the youngsters to do something. As Smith is buried by that Seattle front. Quentin Jefferson leading the charge. It's a loss of 10. As, as you can see right here, protection just breaks down a little bit. And really, Gino has no chance as he sets his back feet, looking for somewhere to throw the ball. There's rush coming in his face, and he couldn't do nothing but, but eat the ball. Jefferson, the former stud at Maryland, their former fifth round pick back in 2016. Drew Kayser, good looking punt. This should be fielded by McKissick just inside his five. And then a late marker thrown at around the 18 yard line. It's a 53 yard punt by Kayser. And we'll get the call here from Tony Carrenti. Looks like a good number of. The Chargers defensive starters will stay on the field here. During Here's the return of the kick, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 38. This penalty of assessed half the distance to the goal. First down. Timeout. That's Trey Madden on the penalty. As Seattle will send out its defense in a one-point game. Beautiful L.A. summer night here at Rocket Field at StubHub Center with the Chargers up by a point. Opening day just around the corner, and right now only a limited number of individual game suite rentals still available. Best way to experience the Los Angeles Chargers game here at StubHub Center. Party suites with a perfect setting to entertain up to 40 guests. High-end food, beverage options. Visit Chargers.com and get the details. Some of the uh, unique game day experiences here at StubHub. It is intimate. You are closer to this field than any other NFL park in the country. And you add to that mix a team that is expected to truly contend this season. And one of the big reasons, Philip Rivers, who's standing by with Haley Elwood. All right, thanks, guys. Philip, I know you said you don't make too much of what happens out here in the preseason, but how did those first couple series go for you? It felt good. I mean, it was nice to score that first drive. I would like to get in there again. Uh, I didn't quite convert that last third down, but it felt good just to be back in the flow. Um, you know, spread the ball around a little bit. Had some uh, Melvin had some good runs. The guys up front are working. Um, we still got a ways to go, but it was, it was good to be out there with him. One of those guys up front is new, Mike Pouncey. First time game action with him, what was that like? It was great. He's got a great presence in the huddle. I've seen it all training camp, so I wasn't real concerned, but it's nice to be in the flow with him in the game's intensity uh, and the way he plays. He's, he'll be a big asset for us. What can you say about Melvin Gordon and his development throughout these years and what he'll bring this season? I think he's really worked at it. You know, for a young back, like just like a young quarterback, uh, when you're going to have some ups and downs, you know, and he fought through some injuries. And, uh, some, you know, like all of us, some good games, bad games. And he's really worked at it. He really cares about it. And uh, I expect to have a big year. So I know that obviously you didn't play this summer, but it's hard to keep you off the field. You coach your son, Gunner. What's that experience like? It's awesome. Gosh, I love coaching him. And now Pete's, Pete will be a first grader, so I got two boys to coach. I, shoot, I coach little girls basketball too, but it's, it's awesome getting to be out there with them. You're approaching your 15th season. What's your mindset going into this year? 
Well, I think it's it's much like every year. It changes a little bit, just I think with age and the more game, more time you've been around. I really just try to enjoy every day and 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 try to get better every day. Enjoy the guys. Enjoy because I, I know I, I, at least I hope to have a handful of years left. Uh, but you know it doesn't last forever. And so I'm just trying to appreciate these times and go out and try to win a bunch of games, win a division, and see what happens. All right, thanks, Philip. Good luck. Thanks. All right, Haley, great stuff. Philip Rivers, of course, turned 36 late last season. Has two years left on his contract. Chargers fans hoping that uh, he sticks around for a very long time. And so Rivers, in our conversation with him this week, said that this is potentially the best team that he's had since that run that uh, LT you and Philip had between 06 and 09. We've got everything you want on paper. And they just hope that they can all put it together this season. We'll continue on that topic as we continue here in this first half. Back with you here at Rocket Field, StubHub Center. As temperatures have cooled, Phillip Rivers, two offensive possessions, led his team down for the opening drive touchdown. Second drive resulted in a punt, but uh, some good things and some things to build upon as Rivers makes his preseason debut on the season. Spiro Adidas, LaDainian Tomlinson, the Hall of Famer, Chargers great, and Haley Elwood down on the sidelines. After Phillip challenged the referees a little bit when he was mm. playing, now he's softened them up. <laughs> you know, now he's done. He's softened them up a little bit for Geno Smith and Cordell Jones. He knows how to play the game. So Mike Ponce on the sidelines. Geno Smith, that pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. And incomplete. We had a, a nice little visit with Philip Rivers earlier this week at practice, and you know, we asked him 15 years in the league if there's anything he does to kind of change up his off-season workout routine. And he actually said that he got into kickboxing this summer for the first time. His wife Tiffany, who had gotten into it, convinced him to join her one day. And Rivers walks in, introduces himself to the instructor Eric, who was there. And you know, Philip says, "Yeah, hey, I'm just here to kind of work up a sweat." And Eric looked at him. The instructor said, "Philip, you're going to get a lot more than a sweat." And <laughs> Rivers says he got into it. It was intense. Forced him to use muscles and body parts that he hadn't really used in workouts in a very long time. And he see, says he feels physically terrific at this stage of the season. And so he gears up for his 15th year in the NFL. Well, I tell you, he can do it. Whatever he wants in the offseason, but just don't hurt the right arm. <laughs> That's the most important thing on his body. So he can do all the kicks and punches he wants to do, but that right arm is special. And he's already said he knows what he wants to do post NFL career, he wants to be a coach. Haley asked him about coaching his kid Gunner, his 10 year old son, and his younger son Pete, who was six and in the first grade. Well, it runs in the family. Yes, you know, it his does. father was a coach. And and so Philip is taken out to his father, has all the, the skill set, the patience, the smarts, intelligence to be a great coach. Beatrice Newsom, who is going to get a lot of run tonight with uh, the absence of both Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson, their seventh round rookie, is going backwards on that play. But do you see what Rivers did last year? Over 4,000 yards passing LT for the ninth time in his 14 years. Well, I tell you, this guy get out out of the bed and throw for 4,000 <laughs> yards. I mean, he he can do it effortless. Um, you know, if he just gets a little bit more from the run game, we talked about what Mike Pouncey brings to this offense. I really believe this team, um, you know, they have what it takes to go all the way. They just got to catch a break here and there, as as every team does. If you want to make a deep playoff run, you have to catch some breaks along the way. Well, every game, every down, be sure to visit Chargers.com. Get up-to-date news and information all season long. Breaking team news, exclusive insider access. Ricky Henney, Haley Elwood, Chris Harry, they've all got you covered with some terrific content as the season goes on. And just to get back to Rivers, you know, statistically, you, you can't do anything else more than what he's done. The only thing that has eluded him, LT, is that postseason success only four and five all time postseason record as a starter is Rivers. And he's only led this team to the playoffs once in the last eight years. And that, that has haunted him over the last couple of seasons. Wilson trying to take his shot. Far side of the field, that was Marcus Johnson, the intended receiver. As Wilson has beaten this secondary a couple of times, that time a little bit too much. As you can see, Casey Harry there with great coverage. It makes Russell Wilson 
have to throw a perfect ball and that's a very difficult throw to get it in there because of the tight coverage by Casey Hayward Jr. Wilson led the NFL in passing touchdowns last season. And so they're needing rusher as we mentioned. Not usually a good thing for an offense. Wilson this time is wrapped up and going down in a heap. It's a loss of five. As we move under the three minute mark left here before halftime, Isaac Rochelle among the tacklers for the Bolts. As you, as you look at Melvin Ingram down at the bottom of your screen, he just beats the right tackle around the edge and able to, to put pressure on Russell Wilson and eventually bring him down. Here, here he is again, just on the right tackle. He's just going to beat him with a speed rush up the field. And has a perfect lane to Russell Wilson, flushes him out the pocket, and every, the cavalry comes to finish him. What a stud Ingram has been for this Chargers defense. Second year of that monster four year, $66 million contract that he signed prior to last season as they continue to look at the injured Charger here. Can't see who it is yet from our vantage point. As the athletic trainers have come onto the field. It's Jalen Watkins who made the start tonight. See the left side of your screen here. Watkins is 27. Mm. Looks like his right leg kind of bent backwards there. Well, you just hate to see that. Mm. Look like Melvin Ingram on that rush as he came around actually fell into Watkins leg there. Hopefully it's not too bad. Mm. Watkins who won a Super Bowl last season with Philly signed that one year free agent contract in March. And unable to put any weight on that right leg and they had high hopes for him. A versatile guy can play both the safety and the cornerback position. We'll try to get an, uh, an update as quickly as we can on Watkins. With a pre-snap movement, this is the play dead. Neutral zone infraction, defense number 54, five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Melvin Ingram just trying to beat the snap and get off the ball and, and beat that right tackle around the edge again like he did last play. Started a little bit too early there. Ingram, a pro bowler last year, actually a first alternate. He replaced his teammate Joey Bosa. He was unable to play in the game. We're going to build on some of the incredible production the Chargers have seen from him. Both in on third and nine after the penalty pass. A little bit too high. Intended for Marcus Johnson again. And they have been going at Michael Davis. They've beaten him a couple of times LT deep. But nicely done on that play. There's a lot to like about Michael Davis as he has patience. He reads the route perfectly. Didn't bail. He just set on the route. He knew what was coming and was easily able to break up that route. Great job by Michael Davis there. Anthony Lynn and Gus Bradley love this kid, Michael Davis. He's an L.A. kid, grew up in Glendale. Kind of an uneven collegiate career at BYU. Was undrafted last year, earned the roster spot for Anthony Lynn. As J.J. Jones shades and burst. Jones is going to score! Chargers build on their lead. And it's, it's amazing. I talked to Coach George Stewart, the special teams coordinator, before the game. He told me that they were going to break one tonight. And boy, what a what a time to do it. What a time to do it. Well, Jones trying to earn a roster spot as one of the back end wide receivers, and this will help his case. Yes, it will. And Jones flashed last week during the special teams game 
had some good returns and that, at that time. This time he is able to take it all the way to the house. Got close last week. He finished it this week. Tons of speed as you saw in a small school kid. Out of West Georgia. That's Roberto Playa with the point after. And what a moment for J.J. Jones, the undrafted rookie. 71 yards on the punt return to give the Chargers an eight-point lead. Officially a 72-yard punt return by J.J. Jones. LT, take us back. What did you see? Yeah, as you can see, J.J. Jones here waiting on the punt. But he's, it's a right return, punt right return. He's just going to try to get in this wall here. As you see, great blocking. There's the wall. J.J. Jones, he's going to hit it. Great blocking, and as he gets through there, watch the burst. Now he has the kicker, cuts back inside, and now you can see that great speed from J.J. Jones, rookie out of West Georgia. Stand up, Georgia. <laughs> That'll get the attention, not only of Anthony Lynn of this staff, but teams around the league looking for a young kick returner. All kinds of talent with that kid, Jones. What a moment for him. As the Chargers defense will come back onto the field. A reminder to stay tuned. Coming up next, the Southern California Chevy Dealers Halftime Report. We will preview that backstage Chargers show that uh, we are looking forward to. Stats and highlights. We'll get LT's take on the first couple of quarters. Chevy Truck Month. Hand down the old and bring on the new with great deals on Chevy Silverado. Learn more at SoCalChevy.com. Spiro Dinas with Danny Tomlinson, Haley Elwood, our producer Mark Teitelman, Mike Hassan, our director, and the rest of our Chargers preseason crew. Bringing you all the pictures and the sounds here from StubHub Center in Carson. Jatavis Brown on the tackle. Seattle's going to go hurry up here. This is two minute offense for Seattle. This is great work that the Los Angeles Chargers get the, to have on defense. I'm sure Gus Bradley. Loves this part of the game. It loves that Russell Wilson is still on the field with a lot of the ones for Seattle. Chance for both coaching staffs to get a good look at their players. As this one appears to be a false start penalty. False start. Offense number 18. Five yard penalty remains second down. Seattle has chosen to use one of its remaining timeouts in lieu of 10 seconds running off the game clock. Timeout, Seattle. All right, so to avoid the 10 second runoff, Pete Carroll will use one of his remaining timeouts. They've got one left here with a buck 25 to play. The man penalized there was Jerron Brown. As Pete Carroll continues to pace up and down that sideline. Second and 12 after the penalty from the 18. Wilson goes underneath here. That's the running back, Mike Davis. Fired off waivers last season from San Francisco. Fourth year in the league out of South Carolina. Pickup of six. Adrian Phillips on the tackle. The clock still running. 63 seconds left. And just one timeout left. And the idea is to keep everything in front of you. Make them throw it short. Come up and make the sure tackle. That's Marcus Johnson out across the 30. That'll be good for a first down. If you're the Los Angeles Chargers, the clock is your friend here. That clock is continuing to run. Wilson so calm as he diligently tries to work them up the field. Davis trying to get out of bounds. Does they'll stop the clock here? A pickup of three, wisely done by Davis. With 36 seconds left. Seattle has Sebastian Janikowski and Jason Myers battling. For their kicker job. Janikowski, of course, the longtime LA slash Oakland Raider. As this pass is caught. Melvin Ingram again with the pressure on that play. Forces Russell Wilson out of the pocket and has to throw it away. So that ruled an incompletion. Davis was out of bounds with the catch. So 30 seconds left, third and six here. As Wilson once again will work from the gun. Yeah. 
Davison over the middle, finds Davis again, crosses the 40. And now time management of the essence as it looks like they'll use their final timeout. 18 seconds remaining. Denzel Perryman on the tackle as Wilson will have a conversation here with Pete Carroll. Here's a look at how the Chargers will start. We know about their struggles out of the gate last year. LT 0-4 start that basically doomed them despite that uh, incredible recovery that we saw from them as the season went on. But this year, much more favorable schedule for their first five weeks will be in L.A., including that game against the Rams on September the 23rd. They're favorable in terms of playing at home, but these are some good teams that they have to play, especially the first four weeks. Kansas City, we know what they are in last year's division champs. And then you have you know, Buffalo. Who knows? Buffalo played tough last year. And uh, it's going to be a challenge, but they have to get out to a good start. Wilson throwing on the run here. It's a pickup of eight yards on the play. Caleb Scott, undrafted rookie out of Vanderbilt on the catch, was able to get out of bounds. So that'll stop the clock with 14 seconds left here. But Seattle has to be careful with uh, no timeouts left. And they need about. 15 yards to get within field goal range. Wilson on second and two. Going to throw it across his body and it falls incomplete. Once again, looking at Scott. And it will be third down coming up with nine seconds left. Desmond King, who was terrific last season as a rookie for Anthony Lynn, was there on the coverage. And Desmond can do a lot of really good things. He's here, you see him as the the slot corner there just sinking in coverage and drives on the football as he sees Russell Wilson throwing his way. Third and two. Wilson hit on the throw and finds the tight end Nick Vanette. That's good for a Seattle first down and Vanette able to get out of bounds. So perhaps one last play here with four ticks of the clock left. Jason Myers. Hoping to try for what would be a very, very long kick. But at the moment, looks like their offense will stay on the field. Great play from the Los Angeles Chargers defense. They have kept everything in front of them, not allowing a big play. And now they have to try a Hail Mary pass instead of a, a field goal. Wilson's going to let his guys get down the field, throw it towards the end zone. And it is batted down and incomplete. Rayshon Jenkins was there as that takes us to halftime here at StubHub Center. Nicely done by Jenkins and that Chargers secondary as they will get off the field up eight here in Carson. We go downstairs. Haley Elwood standing by with Anthony Lynn. We're trying to get points from special teams, offense and defense. It's good to see the special teams step up and put points on the board. We talked about it last week and it happened, so I was excited to see that. Expectations for second half? Second half, you know, we put up uh, reserves in. They got to come out and compete, you know, show up, stand out, and uh, help us make some of these tough decisions that we have going on right now. But uh, just, just compete. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. Sure. All right, Haley, halftime here at StubHub Center. Anthony Lynn and the Chargers up eight. The Chevy Halftime Report comes your way next here at Rocket Field at StubHub Center. Just about ready for the start of the second half with the Chargers leading Seattle 14 to 6. Expecting to see Cardale Jones at some point in his second half. First half stats as we welcome you back Spiro Ditas and LT. Some of the numbers and so that Chargers defense with the uh, bend but uh, don't break mentality giving up a couple of long drives but uh, keeping Seattle out of the end zone. Yeah, and that's what Gus wants to see from his defense. You're going to give up some yards from 20 to 20, but the real key is holding these guys, these offenses, out of the end zone. That's how you win games, and they did a great job in the first half of doing that. You've been watching the Southern California Chevy Dealers Halftime Report. Geno Smith and Cardale Jones, that heated battle for the backup quarterback position behind Phillip Rivers. There's Cardale Jones. 
last year acquired on the eve of training camp a, a very brief time to get his head into the playbook and get comfortable. This would be a huge game for Cordell when he gets in. You know, last week he was a little uneven. He had the first crack at, at starting and playing most of the time with the first team offense um, and just a little uneven. So he has to kind of make up for last week. Artavis Scott. Next man up as a kick return here. It's a return of 25 yards as we go downstairs to Haley. All right, quick injury update for you guys. Safety Jalen Watkins. His return is questionable with a knee. All right, Haley. So I guess positive news the fact that he's still eligible to come back. He's unable to put any weight on that right leg was Watkins. Free agent acquisition from Philadelphia. And something to monitor over the next couple of days. A guy expected to be a pretty key piece in Gus Bradley's defense. Geno Smith still on the number two quarterback tonight. As we begin the second half, Smith to the air on first down, and that pass is caught. And it's Jeremy Davis who had that incredible leaping 47 yard touchdown catch last Saturday night, LT in Arizona. Yeah, Jer Jeremy Davis and Artavis Scott, these guys are in the battle for one of the final wide receiver positions on the, this football team. Davis, former sixth round pick of the Giants back in 2015. Trying to take that next step and earn the trust of Anthony Lynn and these offensive coaches. Here's Detrez Newsom. Told you about his story. Undrafted kid out of Western Carolina fighting Justin Jackson, the young man who the Chargers drafted with their seventh round pick. But Jackson has missed a couple of weeks of camp with a leg injury. He's not playing tonight. And so this kid Newsom who had the six yard touchdown run LT last week right now has the inside track at that number three spot. Yeah no question about it and he, he's shown flashes of what he can be in, in this league. I'll tell you Justin Jackson has to get healthy and show the, these coaches what he can do. Smith on third and four here from the gun. Hit just before the release, and that pass is caught. Nicely done by Smith as he finds Artavis Scott crossing over the middle, 22 yards, and a Los Angeles Chargers first down. As you can see, the two receivers stacked there. Artavis gets off the ball free. He's just going to run an over route. And Gino stands in the pocket very well, steps up, and delivers an accurate pass. Nice play there by the Los Angeles Chargers. That's what you want to see from your quarterback standing in the face of pressure in the pocket knew he was going to get hit but still able to deliver. Newsom again the rookie running left picks up four yards there and just to get back to this kid Newsom not only had the six yard touchdown run last week but he also had a 37 yard touchdown run negated due to a penalty looking very very impressive in his NFL preseason debut. Well you look at his compact style um, his measurements. About 5'10, 210 pounds. That's a nice size for a running back, but that compact style allows him to break tackles and really show his explosiveness when he gets in open field. And there's no doubt after Melvin Gordon, he is the most physical running back that they have currently on their roster. Look at Smith twirling around away from trouble. Beautifully done as he slides inside Seattle's 40. Had a good start to the second half for Geno Smith, a pickup of a half dozen. And I just got to tell you, folks, this is the reason why Geno has the upper track on that second string quarterback situation. Second string quarterbacks don't, they rarely do that. <laughs> Avoid the rush, give a little spin right there, and then gets up the field for positive yardage and gets the first down. Nice job there by Geno Smith. A little pirouette. Can't do it much better than that. Looking real smooth in the pocket. And Smith runs for the first down and gets him to the Seattle 40. Smith goes to the check down. This is Newsom. Has blockers in front of him. And Newsom will get close to the 30. So Newsom doing it as a ball carrier and also showing his hands out of the backfield. A pickup of nine there. Tackled by Jake Pugh. 
the undrafted rookie out of Florida State. It's one of the things I would love to see Detrez Newsom do there is just wait for a second. Scott Quisenberry was out in front of him. You know, his left guard pulling. In fact, I'm sorry, right guard. Scott is playing the right guard position. He got out and pulled, and Detrez just needed to wait just a moment longer to make that cut. LT, how tough is it to develop that aspect of your game as a running back? You know, to have the patience to wait that extra half beat to allow your lead blocker to get set. Yeah, it's a feel that you have to have. You know, um, coming from college, you're used to things being wide open on screen plays when there's no one there. And nobody in college usually chase you down. Where in the National Football League, you feel those guys coming. But you have to tell yourself, I got a little bit longer to wait. I have to wait for this block. And it's just getting more reps at it. Well, not many guys chase you down in the NFL either. But uh, part of the nuance that uh, Newsom and some of these young backs are trying to pick up quickly. Here's Newsom again. This kid just keeps on coming. Taking on a host of defenders. A pickup of six here. You see right there they had the fullback Derek Watt in the game on short yardage. And as you, Derek went in there and, and got his block. Let's take a look at Derek Watt right here. He's going to lead block for Detrez Newsom. Goes in on a little in zone run. Gets his linebacker, moves him out of the hole for Detrez Newsom to get the first down. Now look, Derek Watt is in the backfield. Smith going end zone, and it is caught. Mike Williams. Leaping catch for the Chargers touchdown. And this is why you draft Mike Williams in the first round last year is because of these types of players. You see him on the outside. This is what he did well at Clemson. Just a go route. Go get it, young man. He goes up and makes a spectacular play. Catches the ball at his high point. Holds the possession. Comes down inbounds. Everything you want to see from a former first round draft pick. Mm. That is the kind of skill that Chargers fans had envisioned after the team took this kid, Mike Williams, with the seventh overall pick prior to last season. It's only the preseason, but that is an awfully good omen for the Chargers. Mike Williams, 25 yards from Geno Smith, and it's all Chargers. What a play by Mike Williams, getting himself ready for his second NFL season, seventh overall pick. Last year, but uh, of course, saddled with that herniated disc in his back. Missed all the training camp, was playing behind that eight ball all season long. And LT, let's go back and revisit this. Not only a terrific catch, but how about the throw by Geno Smith? Yeah, terrific throw by Geno, giving him a chance, but this is why Mike Williams went first round. A top 10 lottery pick goes up over the defender. Keeps his balance, stays in bounds. Spectacular catch. Boy, I, I just, I'm, I'm excited to see that more with Phillip Rivers this season. And you forget, you know, we saw him seem like so few uh, times last year. You just forget how thick he is, how big he is. And you, know, you talk to Anthony Lynn, and Seattle keeps it on the ground here with C.J. Proces. They feel like with Williams' size, he can maybe mitigate some of the loss of Hunter Henry, who, of course, was expected to be their number one target in the red zone this season, their tight end who was lost with the knee injury. Maybe he can give them some of that. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Hunter Henry and Antonio Gates received about 32% of the red zone targets last year. I expect some of those targets to go to Mike Williams. He has been that good, and that's a dimension for this football team that they have never had to have a receiver like him along with Keenan Allen and Tyrell Williams. You know, these are some huge basketball type players that are able to catch the ball at his highest point. Because you imagine those guys in the red zone, that's gonna be a scary matchup for a lot of teams. Now, Williams did not debut last year until week five of the regular season with the team at 0-4. And, and a limited and his production just could never seem to get himself right, but uh, he looks like a different player. 
as he gets set for his second NFL season. The quarterback for Seattle is Austin Davis. We'll throw on the run as they give chase. Derwin James was there on the coverage, and it will be fourth and three as the Seahawks will punt. And Sparrow, going back to our previous point, you know, that could be a reason why Gates hasn't come here yet. <laughs> is, you know, you really don't want to stunt the growth of a young guy like Mike, Mike Williams if he's going to add, you know, that dimension of the red zone offense to your team. Maybe, you know, that, that they want to wait and see how much he picks up of, of this offense. And, and that could be the reason why Gates is not here yet. Is that inside information or are you no, just guessing? Just, just, <laughs> being a former player, I kind of understand how it works. Yeah. Yes, you do. And a chance at a return game here on Tavis Scott. Showing that leaping ability. There is a flag thrown at around the 33 yard line. 49 yards of the punt, 15 on the return by Scott. Well, the Chargers have been very good in the return game already. The 72 yard punt return for a touchdown earlier by J.J. Jones. And Scott showing some of his breakaway ability. During the kick, holding, receiving team number 39, 10 yard penalty. First down, timeout. That's Tony Brown, the man penalized, so that will negate the return by Scott. Mike Williams having his moment here on the Hollywood stage. Don't miss a moment for the latest highlights, news, and behind the scenes access. Follow the Los Angeles Chargers on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. LTs all over that social media as we get our first look at Cardale Jones, who, well, let's face it, at least at the moment, is clearly playing catch up now with Geno Smith in the chase for that number two quarterback position. Jones acquired by Tom Telesco in that trade last summer, right on the eve of training camp. Got him for only a seventh round pick, but you consider the fact that he just hasn't played a lot, save for a couple of preseason games, LT, the last couple of years. This is a huge night and a huge moment for Cardale Jones. He has to start to put it together. Absolutely. And he's, he's you know, in my opinion, he's kind of distanced himself now from that second stream job with the performance of Geno Smith tonight. So Cordell needs to keep keep track, you know, stay in this race and have a good night tonight. And distance himself in the wrong direction as he goes underneath here. So a good start for Jones. Last year, kind of a, a developmental year for him as the number three quarterback team electing to keep three quarterbacks out of camp. We'll see what they do this year. And so, you know, those roster spots, LT, are so valuable. Jones has to start to show some things here as he will get an extended run over the final quarter plus. Well, we know the potential that he has. He has the, the big arm, he has the size, everything that you want in a quarterback. But it's the decision making, it's the accuracy that you want to see from your quarterback. And let's see if he can do it tonight. Jones on second and one, he gives here to Newsom. He is going backwards. A loss of seven on the play. And a good push. Rasheem Green lead the charge, the third round pick out yeah. of USC. Yeah, just no chance here is the Seattle Seahawks defensive line stunts toward the, the run play and Detrez Newsom just has no place to go there. Now, how many healthy running backs on their roster tonight? Really it's only Melvin Gordon and Detrez Newsom. Justin Jackson, Austin Eckler and Russell Hansborough are all scratched from this game. And Newsom's got to be gassed. You're saying Derek Watt is not a running yes. back? Yes. I forgot Derek Watt. You're right. <laughs> Have to get the fullback some carries here down the stretch as Cardale Jones uses his legs to get out of trouble. A pickup, actually a loss of four as he runs out of bounds. And it will be fourth down for the Chargers, so they go three and out on Cardale Jones' first possession. Obviously, not the start that he wanted. Well, you know, part of it is, is that loss on second down of the run play kind of hurt this offense in terms of putting them in third and long and that's not ideal for Cordell Jones. There's obviously a gain of four not a loss on the run by Jones but uh, well short of the first down marker. And there's a penalty whistles that. Punt offense number thirty nine. 
five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Tony Brown penalized for the second time in this quarter. We'll mark him back five yards, and it will be fourth and eight. Anthony Lynn has to be a little bit more pleased with what he has seen. Fewer penalties last week than what we saw in the preseason opener in Arizona, but knowing Lynn, he's going to find something to get into his guys about after this one is over. Yeah, well, you and I talked to him before the game, and he talked about cleaning things up, especially the penalties. He really didn't like the penalties and the turnovers that he saw last week. Shane Trapuca, the new punter on. And Cyril Grayson on the return. It looks like Grayson is clutching his right leg here. As he will get Seattle to short field. 15 yards on the return as he will limp to the sideline. 46 yards in the punt by Tribuca, but another flag. A lot discussed during this offseason about the new rules that have been implement, uh, implemented by the league. The helmet rule, the catch mm. rule being tweaked. These officials, I, like the I don't catch know how rule. they do it. They're fouls against I like both the catch teams who allow the, the play to be offset. Holding, receiving team number 49. Unsportsmanlike conduct, kicking team member went out of bounds, failed to come back in. It'll be offsetting fouls will replay fourth down. LT you almost need a NASA degree to memorize that NFL playbook. It gets thicker and more yes. complex every year, but you like some of the changes that they made. I, I do, especially the catch rule. I thought we was getting too technical with the catch rule. And sometimes it's just about common sense. We all know what a catch is. Mm -hmm. If a guy catches the ball and he possesses the ball just for a second, that's a catch. You know, we were getting too technical with the two feet down and you know making a football move and all of those things which I like what they've do they've simplified the catch again and it's going to make it good for football the NFL football I should say for people the fans to watch again well, I think that echoes the sentiment of so many NFL fans around the country but that these officials have a thankless job and a very very difficult job as they try to get themselves ready for the open weekend. Here is McKissick. This kid can run. Terrific breakaway ability, breaking all kinds of tackles as he somehow maneuvers himself all the way to the 49 yard line. 52 yards in the punt, 15 on the return by McKissick. A wood and the rest of our Chargers preseason crew from StubHub Center. Just a couple of weeks out before opening weekend of the NFL season. As the Chargers will open their campaign September the 9th against the Kansas City Chiefs. Austin Davis staying on at quarterback. Little play action boot and finds the tight end Tyrone Swoops. Let's go downstairs. Haley standing by with Melvin Ingram. All right, thanks, guys. Melvin, you guys stopped a Seattle scoring drive. You forced a fumble, which Corey Legit recovered. Walk me through that play. Uh, we just playing hard, man. Our motto is if they can't score, they can't win. So we just playing hard. We just all living us out there playing together. Last year, you made the switch from outside linebacker to defensive end. Obviously worked out. You tied your career high in sacks. But why was that such a beneficial switch for you? Uh, it, it put me in a position to make more plays. With our defense, we based on making plays. Everybody's just out there having fun making plays. So the switch was good. Gus just let us go out there and make plays. What's it like working with Gus Bradley? It's amazing, man. He a blessing in disguise, man. He, he, he's really a player's coach, man. He know how to relate to us. He know how to put us in position, and it's been a blessing ever since he got here. One of those guys you make plays with is obviously Joey Bosa. What's it like to play with him? Man, it's great, man. You know, me and him, we, we get it in every day. That's how we do. We come to work every day, and, and, and it shows. That's what we do. We try to compliment off each other every day, grind every day, get better every day, and, and climb a mountain. We try to win a Super Bowl right here. That's what, that's what we work working towards. There's so much talent on this defensive line. But, you know, what can you say about the room that you guys work in? Say that again? There's so much talent on this defensive line, but what can you say about the room that you guys are a part of? <laughs> room amazing, man. Every, we got a bond in that room, man. We are brothers in there. And, 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 and our coach, man, he make it so easy for us. He, he teach us, teach us, teach us, teach us fundamentals, fundamentals, and then he just go out and let us play. So, man, our room is amazing. You talk a little King Talk. You put out an EP this offseason. Tell us about it. Man, that's amazing, man. It's a great body of work, man. It, it, it's like seven songs. It's amazing. 
King Talk 2 on the way. I'm working on it as we speak, and, and you can go get it anywhere. iTunes, Tidal, Spotify, everywhere. It's, it's a great body of work. And then lastly, we know obviously we talked about you playing defensive end, but you've kind of been lobby lobbying about playing tight end a little bit, huh? Yeah, yeah I'm going to definitely get in there. <laughs> I'm going to put on a show when I get in there, too. For sure, for sure. All right, thanks, Mel. Appreciate All right, it. Thanks. All right, Haley. He doesn't just rush the quarterback. He is a versatile young man, and the nucleus and the talent, LT, that this team has on the defensive side of the football with Ingram and Bosa and some of the guys that they have on the back end in that secondary with Casey Hayward and Trevor Williams, who's really starting to come into his own. You just have every single piece that you want on paper if you're Anthony Lynn. And the depth as well. And you see the depth in preseason because the starters only play so much. Um, it, it tells you a lot about your depth when you can have a game like this where the second string and third string guys are doing as well as the first string guys. As evidence, it's 21 to 6 right now. Mm. Davis is buried. Excellent pursuit. Isaac Rochelle, whose preseason has been terrific. That continues. They dumped Davis for a loss of eight. I'm going to have to do some digging. I haven't heard his album yet. I haven't either, but got to do some research. He's, he's, yeah, I got I got to get it. Check <laughs> it out. Career season last year, as uh, Haley mentioned, tied his career high with the ten and a half sacks, seven and a half of which came over the first five weeks of the season. It's a chance now to Kind of take it in as a spectator with Casey Hayward. Speaking of sacks and rushing the passer, the rookie Uchina and Wosu, that last mm. play came around the edge. And Wosu, the kid who they took in the second round out of USC, he was very, very good in his preseason debut last week, and that continues tonight. At meantime, Austin Davis has had nowhere to go with the football down the field. All smiles from Gus Bradley. As he should be. Mm. Spectacular performance so far from his defense. Was not happy with what he saw last week. Not only from his backups, but uh, his starters. He got pushed around early in that game in Arizona. John Ryan on the punt. Fair catch signaled by Ortega Scott. And this is beautifully done by Ryan as they will down it. Right around the 15 yard line. 32 yards on the perfectly placed punt. Timeout. Heavy hitters within this organization. Spiro Ditas, LaDainian Tomlinson, the Hall of Famer, Haley Elwood, our star of the sidelines, and the rest of our Chargers crew. Mark Titleman, our producer, Mike Hassan, our director, here from StubHub Center. Five yard pickup by Newsom. This kid's going to need an oxygen tank. He's playing so much. And an ice bath after the game. <laughs> I know a lot about those. Well, opening day, LT just a couple of weeks away, and, and Chargers fans I'm so discouraged at the way last season ended that uh, devastating Week 15 loss in Kansas City after they had really come on following that 0 4 start, finished 9 and 7, but uh, missed the postseason again. And I'll tell you what, you know, we talked to a lot of the experts, you among them. A lot of people feel like this is the sexy early pick as Newsom again takes on tackles. Like kind of comes in, but uh, the early sexy pick perhaps to win that AFC West. Yeah, and you, and you look at it, the reason why is there's a lot of turnover in, in the division. Look at Kansas City, obviously, mm -hmm. they're changing quarterbacks. And young Patrick Holding Mahomes now offense, takes the reins. Number 61, 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. And so when you, when you think about it, you don't know what they're going to look like. Alex Smith was a guy that didn't turn the football over, but certainly is a winner. He's won everywhere he's been. And so we just don't know what Kansas City is going to look like. A lot of turnover also on the defensive side of the ball for the Chiefs. And then Oakland, there's turnover there. John Gruden comes in. And Denver, turnover at the quarterback position. Defense for Denver still would be strong. But the skill players, a lot of turnover at skill position. So you just don't know. On paper, the Chargers look like the best team in the division because of Phillip Rivers, you know, the experience that he has, but also all the talent that's around him. 
and especially when you look at the defensive side of the ball, you got two of the best rushers in football in Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. Chargers have not won the division since 2009. That was I was on that team. Your yes. last season as a member of the Chargers. We've only been to the playoffs once since 2013. That was Mike McCoy's first year at the helm of the Chargers. A team that uh, really overachieved, but only one playoff appearance for this franchise over the last eight years. Hoping to reverse that trend. Look at Cardale Jones getting out into the open field. That is a 26 yard scamper by Jones and a big Chargers first down. It's a big run by Cordell, but I want you to see Derek Watt comes over to get this block and frees up Cordell to step up in the pocket and make that run. Great block by Derek Watt allows Cordell to to take off running and show his athletic ability. I got to say you are dominating that telestrator. <laughs> Drawing the pictures. What a block by Derek Watt to free up Cardale Jones. Big night for Geno Smith. And right now it's all Chargers from Los Angeles. No Cardale Jones. Nowhere to throw the football, so doing it with his legs. A big 26 yard run. That's 6'5, 250. Don't nobody want to hit him. <laughs> With that, we begin the fourth quarter here from StubHub Center. One play called as the fullback Derek Watt gets his number called, crosses the 45, a pickup of three. So Cardell Jones, of course, the national champion at Ohio State, led them to that victory over Oregon. Started his career as a member of the Buffalo Bills, of course, played for Anthony Lynn, who was then the Offensive coordinator, just one career regular season appearance for Cardale Jones. He just hasn't played much. And you go back all the way to that 2014 season. Remember, he won the national title, then came back last year, basically lost his job the very next year. So nothing has been easy for this kid. Again, trying to take on tacklers, very close to 50. But uh, again, you can't over. State just how huge a night this is for Cardale Jones trying to stay with Geno Smith. Yes, but he has to he has to gain ex the experience now. We can't give him game game experience. He just hasn't had it. But these are the times where he has to gain that experience and playing this next quarter is huge for him uh, for getting that experience. Acquired right on the eve of training camp last summer by Tom Telesco. They got him for a seventh round pick. Last year, basically, a developmental season for him. Playing behind Rivers and Kellen Clemens. Looks like a delay of game penalty here. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty remains third down. And this is one of the things that Ken Wisenhunt talked about last right. week that he wanted to see Cordell clean up the details of. Of the game, you know, getting in and out of the huddle, calling protections, getting the playoff uh, before the play clock expires. Um, you know, again, he, he has to be able to do these things if he want to make make this ball through. He has been a sponge. He's been in Philip Rivers' back pocket really since the day he got here, trying to absorb as much as he can. But he's got some great leaders. Who have mentored him, of course, Rivers. You saw Ken Wisenhunt on the sideline as Jones, nowhere to go, running for his life. There's just not much he can do right there. Trey Flowers came off off the edge and, and just sat Cordell. No one blocked him. As you see, Trey Flowers comes off the end, and there's nobody there to block him. Doesn't even give Cordell Jones a chance to set up and throw the football. Flowers, the fifth round pick. Rookie out of Oklahoma State, just about untouched to the quarterback. Puke on the punt again. And a fair catch signal. And Cyril Grayson, as Seattle will have it from the 35 yard line. Chargers preseason football continues 21 to 6. Back with you. Here in Los Angeles, 21 to 6, the Chargers leading the Seattle Seahawks. 12 a change to play 
in this opening quarter Spiro Adidas LT and Haley Elwood as we get you our spectrum lightning fast facts touchdown Philip Rivers statistical resurgence over the last couple of years 10 straight seasons of at least 3500 yards passing Joey Bosa whom we have not seen yet in his preseason still dealing with that uh, very minor foot injury hoping to put together another Pro Bowl caliber season new quarterback for Seattle is Alex McGee with our seventh round pick out of Florida International and we get a penalty marker thrown here let's go downstairs to Haley all right, thanks, guys. I'm joined by Clinton Ehrlich, CMO of Rocket. Clinton, congratulations on the partnership with the Chargers. Tell us a little bit about it and why you decided to team up with them. So we are a, uh, a brand new company coming out with a, uh, a line of handsets that includes some value-added services like healthcare and things that are bundled in for everyone. Uh, and from the onset of, of talks with the Chargers, they really understood the value of, of what we were trying to do, and we felt that with them kind of coming here for the for the first time and us kind of being in our rookie season, it was a perfect fit. Um, their belief in what we do and, and us wanting to kind of bring to life what we're doing for the community kind of was a perfect match. What else What else are you most looking forward to with the Chargers? Most looking forward to, one of the things we've got coming up is uh, there's a program with the Chargers called Salute to Service. Uh, and so we actually have a program called Vets to Vets where we're going to be donating handsets and services to homeless veterans in Los Angeles. We're going to start it here and then take that nationwide. And it's probably one of the, the biggest things. Uh, one of our founders is John Paul DeJoria. Uh, he's a huge philanthropic guy. He's part of the Giving Pledge. And so to be able to realize some of the dreams that he has as a founder of our company, uh, being able to do that with the Chargers is probably one of the biggest things we're looking forward to. What can fans look forward to with this partnership? We're going to be doing some really cool giveaways and cool things. And uh, we've got some really interesting and exciting technology that are with our phones. Uh, so there'll be some uh, custom content and things we'll be doing. We have a 3D glasses free uh, phone. So there's going to be some custom content with players that fans will be able to see. And then lots of sweepstakes and giveaways throughout the year as well. All right. Thank you so much, Clinton. Guys, back to you. All right, Haley, very exciting new partnership with the Chargers are very excited about. And they've got some cool things in store with Rocket, one of the bright young companies in the area that does a lot of great work in the community. And uh, we look forward to that partnership over the next couple of weeks and months. So 21 to 6, the Chargers in front. Ray Sean Jenkins, second year member of that. Secondary for Anthony Lynn. Anthony looks confused about something up on the board. It's third down here. Let's see you Uchenna and Wosu come off the end, see if he brings the pressure. Alex McGrew, the quarterback from the gun here. On third and 15, it goes underneath and CJ Proces. Out across the 32, maybe to the 33 yard line. It's a pickup of only five. Well short. And Pete Carroll sends out his punter. Let's take a look at Uchenna right here. Just going to try to beat the tackle up up the field and get a bull rush going. Gets there late. Great job here putting his hands inside. Little rip move. Gets pressure late. Causes the quarterback to throw the ball early. Wosu is a SoCal kid. He was born here in Carson in the shadows of where we are here. At StubHub Center, three-star safety at Narbonne High School out in Harbor City. Of course, all Pac-12 player at USC, and Tom Telesco took him with the 48th overall pick in the 2018 draft. All right, welcome back, and welcome to the Chargers End Zone Field Club here at StubHub Center, where you are literally as close to the action as possible. So along with being having a front row seat to that Mike Williams touchdown that happened over here, you also get access to your seats three hours prior to kickoff. You get premium bar and tailgate at the gold reception and in-service dining during the game. So if you want to learn more, visit Chargers.com. Haley, it's an incredible vantage point. I love it. It's kind of like mm, uh, floor seats at, at the basketball games <laughs> with Spiro. I know you frequently uh, visit oh, yeah. floor me, seats me for basketball. Jack, right next to Jack Nicholson. Look at our Tavis Scott able to wiggle into some open space, but we want to show you the vantage point, just how close those end zone seats are to the field. It is as intimate and as close to the action as really you will find around the NFL. Such a unique game day experience. And just see for yourself. You can hear the hitting. You can feel the impact. And uh, what a moment for those young Chargers fans here in the house at StubHub. It's really the way to go. If you want the field level view, you know, to kind of 
<laughs> understand the speed of the game, the action, the you know the intensity and, and the physicality. That's th this is what you want to see. Yeah, you will have a front row seat this year to a team that is truly expected to contend in that AFC West as they try to get into the playoffs for what would be only the second time since 2013. Cardale Jones is your quarterback, third quarterback that we've seen tonight after Rivers and Geno Smith. First and 15 here as they are marked back deep on their own side of the field. Busy night for Dietrez Newsom, the undrafted rookie out of Western Carolina. LT, what have you seen so far from Cardale Jones? Well, he hasn't had much. Um you know to be excited about or, or he hasn't had much time to throw the football every time he's he it seems like every time he's dropped back he's been under pressure and he's had some good runs out of the pocket evaded the rush shown his athletic ability but what you want to see is him deliver the football go through his progressions and get a grasp on this offense but right now Spiro they're they're in milk in the clock mode you know they're up 21-6 so they really don't want to take any um, chances throwing the football. Just kind of want to eat up the clock and get this game over. Now Jones has looked more impressive with his legs than with his arms. Just hasn't had many opportunities to throw the football down the field. As uh, LT alluded to. But uh, that clock continues to run. Coming up on eight minutes to play in the fourth. I expect a quick pass here. Maybe even a screen or a draw. Jones on third and 11 from far side. It's caught. Going underneath his stat coming across the field. First down for the Chargers. A pickup of 15. And a nice delivery by Jones. And that was an excellent delivery by Cordell Jones. But look at the route by R. Tavis. Just a, a simple stop route. Turns out. And Cordell leads him for a nice play there. Stands in the pocket, delivers a nice ball. A lot of talk about this kid, Artavis Scott. Spent basically all of last season on the Chargers practice squad, but he has been among their best players so far at camp and in this preseason. Here comes Newsom looking for more. Scott battling you know, guys like Jeremy Davis and J.J. Jones for one of those backup wide receiver positions. Clemson's all-time leader in catches. Of course, former collegiate teammate of Mike Williams there, but they feel like this kid, if he can somehow make the team, could help them also in the special teams. Well, he's a dynamic player, a guy that can get the ball in his hands and do some special things with it. I, I envision Los Angeles Chargers being able to use him in multiple ways, screen routes, uh, return game, even running reverses and whatnot. Catching his breath here as we come up onto the seven minute mark. Jones under heavy pressure that time, trying to find Nelson Spruce. And so just no time to get rid of the football. It was Jake Pugh applying the heat. Yeah, and just not not much of a chance here as he boots on that play, comes around and and there's an unblocked defender. Cordell Jones doesn't have a time time to set his feet. And make an accurate throw. He has to get rid of that football before he gets sacked. This is a Seattle defense that was the bedrock, of course, of that great run that culminated in the Super Bowl championship a couple of years ago. But they are in full rebuild mode. Michael Bennett, one of their better pass rushers, shipped away in the offseason as Jones is sacked. Rasheem Green, second time he's gotten to the quarterback tonight. It's a loss of eight, and the Chargers will punt. Well, again, just not much protection for Cordell Jones up front. You know, as you can see right here, number 59 comes around the end and forces Cordell up in the pocket where Rasheem Green can finish him off to get a sack there. Revolving door at the punter continues. We saw Kayser earlier, now Shane Tripuka. Cyril Grayson. And a short return crosses the 40. 
And Seattle will have it from their own 41 when we come back. Well, if anyone had any doubt that the Chargers prioritized getting faster defensively, all you had to do is pay attention to what they did on draft night. Tom Telesco using his first four picks on young speedsters for his defense. Derwin James headlining the list and Shannon Owosu. We haven't seen Justin Jones yet, their third round pick. He's been out with an ankle injury since the end of the first week of August. But uh, he is getting close, of course, Kaiser White. Loads of young talent in the defensive side of the room. A lot of speed from those four draft picks. Magoo going near side of the field. That is Grayson. What a throw by Magoo. And Grayson having to come back and reach for it. It's a pickup of 39. Yeah, and B.J. Clay is in great position here. He does a great job at the press. Get his hands on. He just got to turn around right there, find the ball, and make that ball, make that pass incomplete. Another delayed handoff here to Price Ice, who got some time with Seattle's starting running back last year. All the injuries that they had to contend with at that position. We are now coming up on the final five minutes left in this fourth quarter. Magoo on second and five goes through his reads and finds Procells near side of the field, dumped immediately by Nick Dzubnar, who has been arguably the best special teams player on this Chargers roster, made their team. As an undrafted rookie a couple of years ago, it's a pickup of only two. And it's good to see him out on defense, getting that experience. You never know when you're going to need to play. Third and two, Magoo going end zone. It is caught. Malik Turner for the Seattle touchdown. And they're 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 picking on. Like was that B.J. Clay there? They're pitching, picking on B.J. Clay here at the bottom of your screen. Again, great position until the ball comes. Gets his head around late. Can't find the ball. And Malik Turner with the nice touchdown catch. Turner who had a, a fantastic collegiate career at Illinois, undrafted. Trying to make this team as a rookie. And that'll put him in Pete Carroll's roster list as he tries to make a case for himself. they will go for two here, and that pass is caught. And so they convert. Cyril Grayson, busy man on that drive. And that brings Seattle to within seven with four and change remaining. Go right back down here to pick on B.J. Clay again as fell for the inside move. He just thought there was a slant coming, and he, he broke right back outside for an easy two-point conversion. Let's go downstairs. Haley standing by with Russell Okun. Guys in the background. All right, thanks, guys. We have all sorts of offensive yeah. linemen back here in the background. But, Russell, thanks for joining me. Second season with the Chargers. How's the offseason program been going for you? It's good. We're working hard. You know, we're competing every day. Uh, every day. Everything matters to this group. Uh, and I'm, I'm really happy about uh, the product we're trying to put out on the field. Oh, gosh, here comes Joe Barksdale, per usual. Wouldn't be a preseason broadcast. Do job, I just want to do my job. <laughs> Russ, talk to me about what it's like coming back out in the preseason, getting to hit someone else, getting to be out here and experience game action again. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's, you know, for us, the, the, the standard's been the standard, you know, and uh, each day we're practicing hard, you know, and we're, we're, we're growing into a resilient, tough, uh, physical group. And uh, today is just uh, an opportunity to be able to show that. You're entering your ninth season in the league. Do you still feel the same excitement as you felt almost a decade ago? Oh, my goodness. I love the game. I, I love it. Uh, and just being around these young guys, uh, seeing them prepare and, and getting a chance to just share a little bit of, of uh, my knowledge with them, uh, too, it, it's great. It's so fulfilling. Oh, here we go. we got a defensive okay. photo bomb going on right now. <laughs> what has Mike Pouncey brought to this offensive line? Yeah, there's a, there's a certain tenacity about him. Uh, he's definitely a professional. Uh, he's uh, definitely talented and, and 
and capable, but uh, his leadership, uh, it's, uh, it's unmatched. I've never seen a, a guy like him, never had a teammate like him. He's going to do special things this year. What's it like working with Philip Rivers? I mean, what can you say about him that hasn't been said already? Oh, my goodness. I, I, I mean, to add to everyone else's sentiment, I mean, this, the guy's amazing. Uh, he, he, he's a, a, a leader among men. Like, the, the guy, <laughs> uh, his understanding of the game and, and football and um, his professionalism, it, there's no better pro. This offensive line gave up the fewest amount of sacks in 2017. How can you guys capitalize on that, kind of keep that streak going in 2018? Yeah, it's really simple. You know, it, you can't have people hitting the quarterback. You know, we have to make sure Phil stays upright. Melvin has special games. Any back that's back there has special games. Receivers uh, can get the ball in their hands and make plays. Um, you yeah, know, we, we're, we're trying to build on that. You know, we don't want to get hit. want him to get hit at all. All right, thanks, Russ. Appreciate it. No problem. All right, Haley, what a, a free agent acquisition Okung was for Tom Telesco on the Chargers last season. Really solidified Phillip Rivers' blind side. The most important piece up front is Cardell Jones is going to scramble far side. will get the first down here as they're trying to keep running, but just can't overemphasize enough what Okun's impact meant LT for this offense last year. Well, one of the most important positions in football is the left tackle, and that's simply because you're, it's the quarterback's blind side, and you have to have a strong guy at the left tackle position. And Russell Okun has been a great pro. He's a consummate, a consummate professional and came to this team, handled everything the right way, and, and now he's become one of the leaders on this football team. Drafted sixth overall by the Seattle Seahawks in 2010. What an incredible run he had up in the Pacific Northwest. As Newsom taking out tacklers here crosses the 40. And will get out to the 46-yard line. Was a part of their Super Bowl championship team couple of years ago and then went on to Denver signed that one year contract and he made headlines as you'll recall acting as his own agent and he's an interesting guy he was very vocal this offseason about how the CBA is you know kind of something that puts the player at a disadvantage with how the structures of the contracts are structured in the NFL he was a very intelligent young man very and, uh, hasn't been bashful about some of his opinions yeah very smart guy and you know, has a bright future after football and whatever he decides to do. Without a doubt. There's a one play call here to Newsom. They've got those ice bags ready for this kid. He has had a busy, busy night. The only other healthy running back who is dressed tonight behind Melvin Gordon, whose night ended a long, long time ago. Two minute warning here at StubHub. Back with you, Rocket Field at StubHub Center, Carson, California. Happy to have you with us. Preseason week number two for the LA Chargers as they continue to gear up for this 2018 season that begins for them on September the 9th, right around the corner. And what a way to start the year in the division against Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a big play here for Cordell Jones. See if he can pick up this first down. Can this kid start to put something together as he is running out of time here and his battle with Geno Smith for the backup quarterback position handoff Newsom plenty of open real estate and Newsom still has some gas left in the tank 30 yards on the burst by the undrafted rookie out of Western Carolina. And just look at these guys up front as they move people and open up a hole right up the middle for Detrez Newsom. Nice cutback. You see the wall there. And Detrez Newsom burst through that open hole. Spiro, I think you could have got 10 yards on this play. <laughs> nice job of running in open field by Detrez. He stays in bounds, so the clock continues to run. I love you, but no chance. <laughs> 15 carries, making 16 carries for 71 yards now. And Newsom once again is doing everything he can to earn that number three running back position behind Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler. Well, the, the problem is when you're the third team running back, you're going to have to play, play some special teams. And I know they want to see Detrez play some special teams. He just wasn't able to play tonight. 
So maybe next game they'll see him play a little special teams. Yeah, we asked Anthony Lynn on the field before the game about mm -hmm. that, and he was lamenting just that fact. He said, look, I, I need to see this kid on specials, but knowing that he was going to have to carry the ball for us tonight, you had to take him off all of the special teams. So that really is the last box that uh, Newsom will have to check. And so Anthony Lynn and Tom Telesco and the rest of that staff will have to make some roster decisions in a couple of weeks. Well, he's certainly big enough. He has the size. He's 210 pounds. There is no reason why he shouldn't be able to play special teams. You know, certainly can run down on kickoffs and, and, and make some tackles and run down on punts and maybe even be on kickoff return and who knows, maybe punt return. So the kid has the size. He just has to go out and do it on special teams. Well, Anthony Lynn's been hitting that weight room, it looks like, hasn't he? So he can still strap it on and get out there yeah. and play with some of these guys. Is that run play going backwards? Newsom just barely able to get back to the line of scrimmage. But you know, you look at Lynn, he's got that aggression, he's got you know, kind of that instant respect that he earns and demands when he walks into the room. And he brought an element of physicality and toughness to this franchise last year, LT, that uh, they desperately needed as they just narrowly missed the playoffs. Yeah, and his motto is just simply to compete at everything. No matter what you're doing, he wants to have a team that of guys that love to compete, as he did. He had to earn his way in the National Football League, uh, play special teams a lot of the times, but he knew what it was about. It was, it was about competing at every level. He certainly had to earn his keep as a coach 16 years as an NFL assistant before finally getting a head coaching opportunity as he took over for Mike McCoy of course prior to last season but uh, some huge coaching influences of course spent time under Mike Shanahan in Denver uh, was with Bill Parcells in Dallas and they all kind of helped mold him into the coach that he has become quickly earning respect for what he's done here around the NFL yeah just by simply being around those two coaches Bill Parcells and Mike Shanahan the, I mean you have to learn a lot from from those world championship coaches and, and certainly when he was a young coach Bill Parcells was was his guy that was the guy he looked up to most uh, because of the way obviously Bill can interact with players and motivate guys to you know do things they didn't think they could do and then when you you're around a guy like Mike Shanahan just the mindset the you know, the, the genius at, at the offensive uh, offensive coaching is, is tremendous for a guy like Anthony Lynn. This is Roberto Aguayo. This is a big moment yes. for him entrenched in that battle for the starting place kicker job with Caleb Sturgis who was acquired in the offseason from Philadelphia. So this will be officially a 39 yard attempt. We haven't seen much of Aguayo save for a couple of Extra points. This is his first field goal attempt of the preseason, and it is perfect. That got to be a great feeling for the young man. And this is what Anthony Lynn and Coach George Stewart want to see from the young man. It's just simply come out when it matters and kick it right through the uprights as he did there. Aguayo, the 59th overall pick of Tampa Bay back in 2016, that disastrous rookie season. Was cut last year by Tampa Bay after just one week of the preseason, signed days later by Chicago, then they cut him at the end of their camp. Young man trying to resurrect his young career here in L.A. as a member of the Chargers. So a 10 point Chargers lead with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. There's Caleb Sturgis, whom we have not seen tonight. We'll have to expect that we'll see a heavy dose of him next week in the third week of the preseason, which is basically the dress rehearsal, of course, LT. We know you didn't play much in the preseason, but for everyone else on the roster, that's a big moment. It really is, especially for the first and the second team guys. You will see the first team guys play through halftime and 
some of them will play, you know, into the third quarter, but then the second string guys usually will, will take the rest of the game. Might not see a lot of third string or fourth string guys next week because, as you mentioned, that's the true dress rehearsal. That is the game During that, the return of the kick, that illegal block everybody the around this league return team, prepares to play 25. like it's a full regular season game. Penalty be assessed. And then the fourth, yards, seat, the fourth the, uh, preseason game is starters won't play much at all. Of course, there's a new roster cut down. The way that the leagues have the teams trim their rosters, it used to be you'd go from 90 to 75 and then down to the 53. Now there's just one cut down. And this year it comes on September the 1st, so you have to go from 90 players to 53. Mm. And it seems like everyone you talk to, coaches, executives, they all like this new schedule, the way that they do it. It really puts a little bit more emphasis, LT, on that fourth preseason game. Well, yeah, no question about it, but also it allows you more time to evaluate uh, the guys that are on your team. Maybe the guys that you didn't get a chance to see, you know, the, the first two preseason games. A couple of weeks left for some of these young undrafted players to earn their keep and earn their spot. Not only with these two teams, of course, but uh, the other teams around the NFL. 13 yard pass play is Tanner McAvoy. And Tanner McAvoy should have got out of bounds there. He would have been able to save some of the time on the clock if he just get out of bounds. Quick spike by Alex Magoo, the third string quarterback. And seventh round pick out of Florida International. <laughs> Trying to gain the confidence of Pete Carroll. <laughs> the pass from Magoo is deflected at the line of scrimmage. So perhaps time for one final play with four seconds remaining in Seattle out of timeouts. This is Seattle team that will open the season. On September the 9th they'll be in Denver. Hmm. It's a not That'll quite a tough one. Yes it will. Denver of course with high hopes with their new quarterback Case Keenum. But there's certainly a lot of question marks. Up and down that roster. Magoo from the gun. They'll go underneath. This will be the final play of the game. Process gets out to the 38, and that will do it. As the Chargers break through, and there is a penalty flag thrown. <laughs> of course, there is. <laughs> that has been a, a common theme in the preseason. Anthony Lynn says, let's get back. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask, defense. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play, and we'll extend for one on time down. Fans will get some free football here for one more play. With the face mask penalty against Anthony Lynn's defense. You see Prosos right there. DeZubnar getting a, a face full of the face mask. And I'll tell you, <laughs> It's the 13th penalty by the Los Angeles Chargers tonight. Last week they had 15, and I'll tell you, that'll be something Anthony Lynn will harp on tomorrow. Again, penalties will get you beat in the regular season, so he will be talking to his football team about that. Well, they started well tonight, but uh, a little bit sloppy down the stretch. And we'll get another flag here. 58. Five yard penalty. It will remain first down, and we will continue with an extension. Uchenna is trying down. to get a sack here. Uh, I gotta say, that's probably why he jumped off sides. He wants to get to the quarterback. So, Nuosu coming across prematurely. Chargers may penalize themselves into their own field goal range here. And Seattle trying to salvage some points, but of course, think an end zone with no time left on the clock and down 10. Magoo under center. This could be the Second final play of the day. Magoo will give his guys a shot. End zone. And we'll see if it is officially an interception. Now they say incomplete. 
as it lands in the outstretched arms of Rayshon Jenkins. So finally it is over. The Chargers get their first preseason victory here in 2018. Final score Chargers 24 and the Seattle Seahawks 14. So Brian Schottenheimer of course no stranger to the Chargers nice moment between him and Anthony Lynn as Jenkins comes down with it but uh, LT just runs out of real estate. Yeah and, and the, the thing that I love about these last plays on Hail Mary's the referees never call pass interference so you can do whatever you want at the end of the game to the receivers they're not going to call it. LT what do you take away obviously the backup quarterback position may be sliding a little bit more in the favor of Geno Smith. Well I, I thought Geno played excellent tonight he really showed poise command of the offense has some great throws you know eluded the rush and you know, made some plays with his legs when he needed to um, really took a step forward to claim that second string quarterback position. Geno Smith looked poised. Made some terrific throws and also ran for a couple of first downs leading the Chargers down the field and route to their first preseason victory of 2018. So for Ladania Tomlinson Haley Elwood our producer Mark Teitelman and our director Mike Hassan this is Spiro Dita saying good night from Los Angeles where once again the final score the Chargers 24 and the Seattle Seahawks 14 tune in next week when the Chargers take on the New Orleans Saints here at StubHub Center now for those of you watching on KBC stay tuned for the Chargers post game on ABC 7 with Rob Fukazaki and Ashley Brewer good night from Carson.